welcome to the session let's get started with understanding pcb design with protus isis and ares before going deep into what is protus isis and ares this session is about understanding the basics of printed circuit board or pcb and it's very important for us to understand about the basics first so let's begin now uh, the most important question then comes is what is pcb and why there is a need of pcb we all know guys that an electronic circuit can be represented on a paper like this but if you have to give it a physical form if you have to materialize the particular circuit or give it a permanent form then we need to have some solid or a concrete platform or base onto which these components can be mounted and in order to do so in order to do exactly that what we do is we create a printed circuit board now the printed circuit board is the best way to materialize and manufacture a circuit now what is the printed circuit board made up of it is made up of a substrate onto which some copper thin copper layer is deposited all around so you can see this is a sample board onto which the copper is completely deposited now this is called as a bare pcb there can be a single sided pcb on which copper is deposited on one layer or there can be a double sided pcb in which copper is deposited on both the layers copper layers can be of different thicknesses but the most popular and the most common thickness of the copper which is used in industry is 35 micron now what is this substrate the substrate or the base material which we call as substrate is usually fiberglass it is also called as fr4 there are different types of it but i am telling you about those only which are most popularly used across the industries this solid core gives the pcb the rigidity and the thickness that we require there are also flexible pcbs which are built on high temperature plastic and the most important point here whenever you are uh, choosing a particular kind of substrate is the kind of board thickness that you want usually 0.8 mm to 2.6 mm thicknesses are used and the most common one is 1.6 mm so if you see across an arduino board or a particular sensor pcb then most probably the thickness of that particular board is 1.6 mm now let's see what is exactly a pcb or what exactly the process of creating a pcb is so the first thing is drawing the pcb or drawing the pcb artwork that is the first step second step in creating a pcb is we etch the pcb in a solution so what we do first is we create a circuit like this onto the pcb and then we make the pcb undergo something called as an etching process in the etching process what happens is all the copper which is unwanted onto the board is removed through a chemical process usually we use fecl3 solution to do that after doing the pcb etching what we do is we drill the pcb according to the holes that we have then we solder the components and then we finish the system now all of these things can be done in an industrial fabrication environment or it can be done in a diy format as well a diy pcb looks something like this as you can see which can be created by hand even at a homes but if you are going for a mass manufacturing if you are going to manufacture number of different pcbs then you need to take the pcbs ordered from a manufacturer in that case the pcbs don't look like this and they look something sophisticated like this one as you can see now you can also see that it is a green colored board with number of different components on to it and they are very sophisticatedly soldered this is mostly the work of a machine and this is a hand work so this is how handmade pcb look like and this is how a machine made pcb looks like now on those machine made pcbs one very common thing is present which is called as solder mask we see that the pcb looks green red and there are number of such colors of this pcb as we can see but in the handmade pcb you see everything is red or the copper color so what is that green color there it is called as the solder mask and it is a particular layer it is a non conductive paint layer or a color layer onto the copper which gives the pcb its color the most popular and the most common one are red green blue as well as black and it protects the copper parts of the pcb from the oxidation process and from all the environmental hazards that can cause or that can reduce the life of copper it is present everywhere onto the pcb except the points where we have to perform soldering and the solder mask is applied when you get your pcbs manufactured from 
a particular manufacturer. Usually at uh, doing at home, we cannot apply the solder mask because it requires a lot of processes, uh, filming processes required and usually it is done under some specific machines. So you are prototyping, if you are prototyping at home, it's good to experiment with this kind of boards. But when you are ordering PCBs, then they will come up with a sophisticated format like that with a solder mask. Now onto the solder mask or onto the PCB as well, you can see there are white markings visible almost everywhere. So onto this uh, snapshot also we can see some white markings. These white markings are called as silk screen. Basically, the job of cell screen is identification of the names of the components which are present onto the PCB. So, it is useful when we are soldering the PCB as well as it is useful when we are performing some kind of troubleshooting with our PCB in order to know which component is placed where or what is the value of a particular resistor which is soldered at this point. Usually, cell screen is white in color. Many people also use yellow colored cell screen, but the industry practice is using white colored one. And the silk screen can also contain some manufacturer data like logo, pin number, names and the PCB name or its revision or a website address or an email address. Usually silk screen can contain any kind of data because silk screen is applied upon the usual green masking layer and therefore it doesn't deteriorate or it doesn't uh, do any interaction or any interference with the copper layer. So, you can print almost anything that you want onto the silk screen. The most common terms of the PCB which you must be aware of before beginning the study of PCB are here. Some of them are here. So, there is one thing called as DRC which is called as design rule check. Most of the softwares use this term in order to check the PCB design for any errors. Then there are holes which are the through hole where we insert the component. So, this is called as a hole. Then there is a pad. So, if you are using an SMD type of PCB, then there is a pad which looks like this. This is called as a pad. This is called as a hole. Then there is wire. Wire is interesting. We will see that in detail when we are discussing double sided PCBs. But let me tell you, wire is a point which connects the top layer and the bottom layer of the PCB. Usually, it is a small hole like this. You can see these are the wires here in this snapshot. And the job of wire is to connect both the layer, top and bottom layer. Then there is track, which is the copper line conducting two parts or basically the wire of a circuit. So, you can see these are the tracks as they can be seen at some vertical and horizontal lines as well as the tilted lines onto the PCB. These are called as the tracks. These are the copper tracks. Then there can be jumper. Usually in a single sided PCB where you cannot trace or where you cannot draw a track between two points, then we usually connect those two points using a wire externally. That is called as a jumper. Then there are planes which are applied onto both top and bottom, uh, bottom side of the PCB as you can see onto this part. So, if you can notice this small shape over here this is a plane on the PCB. It is generally connected to the ground or VCC. Plane is basically an extra deposition of copper which is there to sink the current. Usually planes are given for the VCC or ground potential of a DC circuit as well as planes are also given in a situation where we just want to improve the look of the PCB. In that case the planes are not connected to either VCC or to ground. And lastly, uh, there is one more important term that is called as footprint. Footprint is the PCB footprint of a particular component. So, every component has its own footprint and the dimension of the footprint has to be accurate if you plan to create your PCBs and if you plan to solder the components onto it. So, before doing the designing, you must know the footprint of the particular components that you are using. These are some of the most common terms which are helpful whenever we are creating uh, or whenever we are studying about the printed circuit boards.